7 o'clock. I'd like to call the meeting to order. I'd like to remind everyone that this uh, meeting is being broadcast live and recorded for future use. Also, our chairperson, Mr. Hayes, is participating remotely, and all votes must be by roll call. That being said, uh, would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> the recent events, uh, if we could just have a moment of silence. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, first up on the agenda, approval of the minutes from April 11th, 2018. I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, and it must be roll call. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Abstain. Yes. Yes. Okay. Did you get that, Michelle? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Almost forgot. Uh, Moving down, old business, regional agreement amendment. Uh, has everyone had an opportunity to read through it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we do have the men from Mars uh, <laughs> with us this evening. Uh, should everyone have any questions? Uh, are there any questions on the regional agreement me, uh, amendment? Or the amended agreement, I should say. I wonder if we could now maybe go through the process of what the sequence of events would be so that everyone's clear. We certainly talked about that with our committee, but um, I don't know if one of you folks would just want to talk about how it goes from here. If you could come to the, the podium, to the microphone, be very much appreciated. Thank you, Steve. I'm Steve Hemmen. I'm the Assistant Executive Director and Head of our Consulting Group. Right now, uh, Mac and Steve have been dealing with the Department of Education through Christine Lynch. And, uh, th and she's also sent over to legal. So your agreement has been approved by them that if you have it go to town meeting and your town meetings then approve that, you will then send into town meeting for probably five or six originals with signatures appropriate from school committee and from your towns with the votes, uh, certified votes from the town uh, clerks that they put town meetings passed it. It will then go into the department and then the commissioner would sign it. So right now, your next step is that you are, if you have your, you're going to take a final approval, whatever what you're planning to, and then the town, it's a town meeting level that they vote. One of the things to say is that when you go to town meeting, you can't, neither town can change anything. This is the document you vote on as presented. If one town wants to change something, then it, does, it can't happen. It's the document, and it has been approved by the people of the Department of Education, and normally what happened then at that point, once it's approved, then the commission would sign it. But you have to have your votes at town meeting. And the town meeting votes, by the way, are a majority vote, 50% majority vote. There's no two-thirds or anything of that. Thank you. Thank you. And I would also like to note that uh, the agreement has been sent to the school's attorney. It's been reviewed, and it's uh, fine with him. On that, I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Howard, we'll start any with you. Discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there any discussion? I'm sorry. Mr. Mr. Chairman, How I, I have a statement I'd like to make. Okay. I would like to thank everyone that was on the subcommittee. We have people from the town. We have board selectmen. We have a lot of people that people, school committee members that participated in this committee and did a tremendous amount of work. The people from Mass Association of Regional School Committees did a tremendous amount of work, and I'd like to thank them personally. Everybody put their time in to do this, and hopefully we're successful moving forward with them. So thank you all. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Anybody? And on that note, Mr. Howard? Yes. 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 Unanimous. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, you'd already thank voted you. at once. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay. And I just want to offer thanks to our consultants that we had with us, Mac Reed, Steve Donovan, and Steve Hammond. They've been with us really all the way through the process. We began this, gosh, well over a year ago, um, really worked through a degree, an agreement that had been typed on an Apple IIe computer. So we've come a long way with this and, and uh, 
certain schools were on it, they're no longer even in existence. So um, I think this is a great document for the future and it, it's terrific to have moved forward and to have the help um, from Massachusetts Regional Schools was terrific. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. And moving down the list of old business, uh, FY 2019 budget. As you all know, uh, we started some budget discussion in our last meeting uh, concerning the assessment. Uh, I would offer, uh, you know, my thoughts after attending a few FinCom meetings and talking with uh, the town. We also have a uh, email uh, from uh, the town of Hanson from Mr. McHugh. I'll read this into the record. Ruth, I have discussed tonight with the chairman and accountant. I will not be able to return for the meeting tonight and the chairman has made another commitment. After conversing with Chairman Hayes as well, we feel that the comments I made at the previous meeting remain current. The town of Hanson will do its best to meet an overall assessment of 9.5%. Anything in excess of this amount cannot be supported via our FY19 budget. Additional reductions in the assessment are also obvious, helpful, obviously helpful. Uh, looking forward, <coughs> increases similar to this as soon as FY20 cannot be supported without a long-term strategy and collaboration between the towns and the district. I repeat my commitment to engage in that effort. Uh, so this was received today uh, from Mike McHugh. Thank you. So on that line. I'd like to make a motion. We set the assessment to 9.5. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion. Mr. Trotta. Um, <clears throat> I think it's probably one of the most difficult things that we face. Um, the 13.6 budget that we initially tried to um, secure obviously was a little bit too rich for both towns. And I feel as though as uh, school committee people, going down to 9.5 is probably the correct thing to do. Um, however, I think people need to understand that when we create our budget, we are creating a budget that is best for the Whitman Hanson Regional School System. And when we make that uh, budget assessment, <clears throat> I think that's what we have in mind. And then I think what happens, things kind of trickle down, and on the town side, there seems to be um, a budget concern there. So what I'm hoping is that there's been a lot of talk about starting the budget process earlier in the year. Um, I know there was talk about last year creating a budget subcommittee of selectmen, uh, chairman, uh, selectmen, excuse me, town managers and so forth, to try and create something so that both sides have an idea of what we may be looking for because it seems that the budget process um, as it stands doesn't really seem to gel when it comes to this time of year. Um, I know there are a number of things that we really need that we have to cut because of this budget. Um, I know probably as a taxpayer they look at it and say I don't know I don't want an override my taxes are going up but people need to understand that when we build a school budget I think we're building something that we believe in, and unfortunately it costs a lot to run a school system. And as we've mentioned before, the mandates that come down um, that aren't fully funded are a huge problem for us. And I'll just say one more time, the people that are making those decisions, I don't think contact the people who will be impacted by it. Um, and I think that's a big problem in the way in which the legislature creates their mandates. If they would say, we're thinking of this, how is it going to impact your school system? Um, things might be a little bit better, but um, unfortunately, uh, I will support the 9.5%. Mm -hmm. Mr. Boyce. <clears throat> Chairman, I, I agree with everything Mr. Trotter says, but I'll even add to that. It's not what we need, it's what the, the students need. Um, and regardless of whether <clears throat> the state wants to give us full reimbursement for transportation, we still need to provide transportation. Uh, we still need to provide for social and emotional learning. We still need to provide and I'll even use myself as the example in, in these schools. When I entered middle school, I think I was a wreck going into sixth grade. Um, there was, I was fortunate that there were counselors there to help me. I'm not saying that we're lacking counselors, but we were looking to move forward with helping every student. Every single student, as Ruth would say, 
in the rest of the district every day. Not every other day and not every other student. So, I, I mean, I, I still want to hearken on that and remind folks, and also remind folks that we, we're still fighting for that money that's been owed to us, or at least in this fiscal year. Um, it would be great to get it going back. Um, I remember a few meetings ago, and I'm sorry I wasn't at the last meeting, uh, talking with Mr. Small, and, and you know, why don't we just ask them for all of that money? Because it goes back 10 years. And I know it's, it sounds repetitive and it sounds old, but it's still true. It's not anything that's new news. But I, I, do, I do agree with the words. And, and I mean, I'll support that fine. Uh, it's with some hesitation because I still think we um, are undoing a couple things that were put very important as a high priority. Uh, one of the things I thought about also today, and sorry to go on, was, you know, we put valuable professionals in each of our departments, and it's never to pit one against the other, but, you know, I plow snow for myself and do driveways in the town of Whitman on, uh, on my own, and I would think, well, what if I didn't have the snow plow? What if I, you know, I put everything forward to be the best professional, but I don't have the snow plow, and I'm in someone's driveway, and now I'm pushing it with a piece of plywood or something. You know, I'm, I'm not giving myself the right tools and the right resources. And I don't, I don't think we, we want to see that happen with any town. I want a four-minute four ambulance response. Um, I want the best in our police personnel and the folks that, that, you know, support both municipalities with, be it DPW or whatever, um, town halls and so forth. Um, I'm not saying it stops with us, but I know we're the, probably the most difficult piece but we hope that we can, you know, find the way to do this. And we'll still be with, we have um, um, Education Day School Day on the Hill um, coming up this Wednesday. Um, I know some people probably will be participating. There's other means. Uh, a few of us, myself and a few others, will be at the Republican State Convention on Saturday, which doesn't mean that we can't get up and bend the um, governor's ear a little bit. Um, you know, there's just different things that might help. We'll just keep working at them. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Yeah. <clears throat> I understand the budget concern, especially in Whitman this year, but I hope that parents and taxpayers understand that we're struggling. Like, we're, we're not, there's no new trucks. There's no new employees in this budget. We're, we're losing this year. I mean, if not, we break even. Meanwhile, we're struggling. And this, isn't, this is not a step forward at 9.5%. In my opinion, it's a step backwards. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> you know, from and from my point of view, we're providing the same services that we provided this year, nothing additional, and we're eliminating a position in one of the schools that was there due to a bubble of uh, enrollment. So we've actually gone backwards, not forwards. Uh -huh. And perhaps Ruth, you can elaborate. Uh, you know, what does nine and a half percent mean? Yeah, what it means really is, is what you've all said, it's level service. Uh, we had tried to add the family liaison position because of our concerns about social emotional issues at the elementary. Um, we also wanted to add special needs liaison teachers in both of our middle schools to help, particularly with science, but also history, social studies. Um, so those are the things we're not gonna have in the budget um, because at the nine and a half. Um, the one adjustment, we would lose that position because our enrollment is declining, and that's true statewide. Um, so that would not be there. The part I think that's, that's difficult for all of us is we have, I think, a very solid strategic plan. And our plan tells us that we need no-cost full-day kindergarten. It tells us that our foreign language program is not very strong. We're just offering Spanish and not even to every middle school child we, at, uh, at the middle school level. That's a real concern trying to move forward with standards-based education. We need new science programs, new math programs, new English programs. That's all gonna cost money. And you know, I, we've had many subcommittee meetings with the towns, we've worked with everyone over the years. It's really gotta be everyone coming together, all the departments saying, okay, if we're gonna have good towns, it's good fire, it's good police, but it's good schools. It's not one at the expense of the other. And very challenging. And I think we also need to push at the state level. Yeah. And I'd like to make two comments. And going back to what uh, Mr. Boyce started off with, we need to transport our children. 
well, if it's mandated busing, we don't need to, we have to. We have no choice but to bust them and pay that bill, period. Uh, and they don't pay us back as the statute requires. Uh, number two, when you look at a large portion of our funding, $25 million comes from Chapter 70 funding. But yet Chapter 70 funding is only expanding at a half a percent a year. And our budget obviously increases between 3 and 4 percent a year. That's right. So now we, the only other place we can look to to increase revenues is the towns. And it's just not fair. Uh, it really isn't. But that's you know, my take on it uh, myself, as I've stated many times. Mr. Howard. So just, I think just a general comment. And I, I think I sit here again disappointed, right? Just disappointed as a whole in where we're at both within this budget process and where we are collectively within the towns. I think we've talked about it, right? So, you know, I think we've talked about this before. It really comes down to what is the communities that we, what, what do those communities look like, right? And I just, I, I, I'm really not liking what they look like. I look at the warrant in Hanson and I see things that police needs and fire needs. And I don't think we should be saying, hey, well, we're not gonna do those so we can fund education. I just, I don't think that that's the answer. Um, but I sit here and know what my charge is on this committee and our charge is on this committee, and I don't like where we're ending up. So, you know, these conversations about the budget process, I think it's less about the budget process. It's more coming together as communities and figuring it out. This is what we want to look like in the future as a whole. And this is what it's going to take to finance that, right? Whether it's fire, police, highway, all of the above, and the schools. So I really hope that you know, we get there because I just don't think the direction we're going as Whitman and Hanson as towns is the direction that I want to go. And I think we're <clears> going <throat> to have to change that or it just, it, it's, it's just not going to be a pretty picture as far as the and It's not only that, but it's also the sustainability. Mm -hmm. You know, you can put a Band-Aid on it and you can pay for it this year. And what do you do next year? Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to try and figure something out. And I don't know what that answer is, but... I think one thing, though, on a little bit of an upbeat note that I think gives me hope that maybe we can do what Chris is talking about is that I put together, we do a, the community guide to the budget that we distribute at town meeting, and I was working on it today. And if you look at our increases in budget beginning when I became superintendent, we even had one year where we went down 2%. Mm -hmm. We now have consistently increased the budget, and this year, hopefully the same, over 3%, and this would be the third year in the row. So at least we are now at level service. Prior to that, we just kept slipping back and slipping back. So I think the next big step, I agree, are to have the communities come together and move beyond that 3%. 3% is level service. You want a budget with a lot of the things we know our children need, you're gonna have to do five or six. It's gonna be overrides, but it's gonna have to be everybody saying this is what's good for everybody, children as well as adults. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just got to throw this out there. <clears throat> what if nine and a half isn't voted on and we get stuck with a 5%? What's the damage that's done to the school system? At 5%, uh, uh, we will lose seven, uh, eight, seven, 19 seven, positions. 19 positions. It's not really positions. It's almost like courses are going to be wiped off. Well, I mean, the class size will go haywire, yeah. and we won't be able to offer the breadth um, usually it's the arts that suffer mm -hmm. first, um, and then we have large PE classes. That happens, and then we, <clears throat> user fees go up. I mean, it becomes a snowball. What we try to do is what we did during the, you know, the early part of, of this was we concentrated on teachers in core classrooms. That's what we would do, and the rest of it starts to go away. And that's, so. that's why I wanted to bring that yep. up, just to let folks out there know. Yeah. I mean, nine and a half, we're just... Staying at the same bubble, we're, we're, not, we're, about not, the same. we're not getting to where we're trying to restore no, language we're, arts. We're not losing. <laughs> That's the And best. other things that these children yeah. actually need. Right. But um, yeah, it's going to have to be a cooperative effort. I mean, I, I see that happening <coughs> a little bit every year. It's just, you know, we, we definitely have to meet with the selectmen, FinCom, a lot earlier. Town's got to get together. People are going to have to start realizing, you know, like, like Chris was saying, you're a parent, you're a taxpayer. But we're also the executive boards are the biggest company we got going in the in the, in the two towns. Um, 
like Chris is saying, <laughs> one part of us is saying, yeah, we have to go forward, but the other part saying, yeah, we, we, we also don't want to be losing out on things and putting both towns into, right. you know, constant battles, which we don't need. Mr. Hayes, I did want to make sure I give you the opportunity. Well, to quote a former school committee member, with all due respect to all of the previous speakers, I completely agree. One of the things that we have to remember is the towns of Whitman and Hanson, which I've lived in for my entire life, whether it be Whitman and Hanson, have, have been some of the best communities to raise children in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Although 9.5% isn't ideal, it's probably as much as the towns can afford, whether we're talking about police or fire or any of those people, they're very supportive of the schools and the things that we do. So I would support the 9.5%, 100%. And I thank everyone for coming to see Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to read off the numbers so everyone uh, knows exactly what we're voting on. Uh, the increase to the budget is $1,924,598. Uh, the increase to Whitman of that is $1,151,295. And Hansen's share is $773,304,000. And at this point, uh, I'd like to call for the roll call vote. Yes. Yes. Reluctantly, yes. Second that reluctantly, yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. <coughs> Unanimous. Uh, should there be anything else, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So may. Second. All in favor? Yes. 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 Adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.